Hi, and thanks for joining. My name is Rob, and today I'm going to be taking you through a quick demonstration of how you can use Flexitive to build a fully responsive design for digital signage. Now, before we start building, I wanted to quickly bring your attention to the contact support icon at the top of the screen. Um, if at any point during this demonstration or while you're working in Flexitive, you have a question or even just some feedback on how Flexitive could be even better, best thing to do is to send us a message using this widget. Um, it goes directly to a member of our support staff who will be able to get back to you within one business day. Now, you can also use this search articles function in the, um, in the contact support widget. And if you have a question, say, specifically on fonts, I can use this to search up all the different articles that might be related to that topic. And this is a really quick way for me to go into the Flexitive knowledge base and get that information quickly. So I'm going to start building now. So first things first, going to give my design a name. So we'll call this Adaptive Bean, and we'll call it Adaptive Bean coffee cup, just tap create. And from here, I'm going to be brought into the template selection screen in Flexitive. Um, so in this screen, I can choose from any of the preset templates in Flexitive, or I can jump into a blank canvas. Now, what I'm building today is going to be a responsive design specifically for digital signage. Um, so I'm not going to use any of the existing templates, I'm going to jump into a blank canvas for responsive. And the first difference that you're going to see with a responsive design, you might be used to working in uh, specific resolutions, but with a responsive design, we're instead going to be working with aspect ratios. So these are very similar. Uh, the build process is very similar to anything you would do with a fixed size resolution. All I'm going to do is jump over to these full screen sizes, and you'll see that there are a bunch of different aspect ratios that would pertain to different screen sizes. So obviously the most common being 16 by 9, so that's where we're going to start. So I'll just click on that size to enter into it. And from here, I'm just going to upload some image assets for me to work with today. Oh, missed one, just going to grab that quickly. And while we wait for those to upload, just going to quickly change my background to be white. Perfect. So from here, all I have to do to add an image to the canvas is drag and drop it. And then from there, I can reposition or resize it however I'd like. Now, I want to bring special attention to the way that the image is actually interacting with the bounding box as I resize it. You'll notice that no matter what I do, the image is always set to be contained within the bounding box and maintaining its aspect ratio. Now, this is the default setting in Flexitive, but I can change this if I'd like. I'm going to go into this customize panel here. You'll see there's fit and then there's fill and crop. I'm going to click on fill and crop quickly and that'll expand it out to completely fill the bounding box. And then I can use this little uh, green circle icon that you can see here to control what part of the image I'm looking at. So this will let me crop my image based on how I want this to be displayed. I'll just quickly set my focus to the top left. And then this is going to be the background image for my canvas. So I'm going to jump into my background and layers panel and then simply drag and drop this onto the background image. And that'll expand it out to completely fill the canvas automatically for me. From here, adding the rest of the images exactly the same as before. So just drag and drop. And I'll just quickly add the rest of my images to the canvas and resize them. One final step, I'm going to add some text. So you'll see on the left hand side, there's this text option. I'll just click on that. And this is going to put a text box on the canvas for me to work in today. And from here, I can adjust the font, I can adjust the font size and color. So I'll change it to be a white text that is aligned to the center, and I'm going to use uh, Roboto today for my font. There are over 700 free fonts available in Flexitive right now, uh, many, many different Google fonts as well as a handful of different fonts.com fonts. If you have a fonts.com subscription, you can also access over 20,000 fonts directly from within Flexitive. You can even upload your own font if the font that you need isn't available by default. So I'm just going to select Roboto, we'll use the medium styling. And then I'll just change the text to say celebrate coffee. From here, I'll just quickly resize the text to fit a little bit better to this canvas. So I can adjust in two different ways. The first one is from a corner. If I adjust from the corner, you'll see that a, the text itself is going to stay the same size, but I can change the line breaks really, really straightforwardly. If I adjust from an edge, the line breaks will remain the same, but the size will change. So using those two options, I can really, really quickly set this up to be a better fit for the canvas. Now, I'm going to select all of uh, these three images here at the same time by holding control and then stack them on top of one another just by using this align to group option. So I'll align them all center just to make it so that they're all lined up. 
And that's everything with the first size. From here, I'm going to jump back out to my all sizes view. So you'll see there's this uh, create sizes option. Click on that and click on view all sizes. And you'll see that now it by default shows me this only uh, one active size of the 16 by nine. If this was the only size that I needed to display, I'd be done here. Um, but I'm going to activate a couple more just to quickly demonstrate how easy that is in Flexitive. So to continue activating more sizes, in the sizes panel, I'm gonna to toggle this only show active sizes option off. And you'll see that this brings me back towards the view that I started in uh, with all of the different sizes available. Now, all I need to do to activate a new size is just in this panel, click on it. And Flexitive is going to adapt the layout that I built for the 16 by nine into any new layout that I use. So the five by three, 16 by 10, three by two, four by three, and a one by one. Now for the most part, this looks really, really good. Flexitive has done a great job of adapting that 16 by nine in two different sizes. But for this one by one in particular, I'm actually gonna jump back into this design and make a couple quick edits just to make a, a slightly different layout from here. So I'm gonna take this adaptive bean logo, make it a little bit larger, shrink the cup down just a little bit. Adjust the uh, adaptive bean icon and then take the celebrate coffee and we're going to put that on one line and put it between the coffee cup and the call to action and again select all my elements and just this time I'll align them to the center of the canvas really really quickly now I've got this one by one full screen size activated as well I can jump back into my full screen sizes and you can see I now have two distinct layouts one for the one by one and one for the uh, and one for the rest of my sizes from here, I'm also going to activate some portrait sizes. You might have uh, portrait designs built as well. So I'm going to jump into portrait. And then again, it's as simple as clicking. Now, you'll notice that this is actually using the one by one layout rather than that 16 by nine layout. The reason why it's doing that is every single time you activate a new size, Flexitive looks at everything you've built so far and chooses the aspect ratio that is the closest match to what, you, uh, to what you're trying to activate. So the three by four, the closest match was that one by one. So that's the size that it's used. From here, I'll just click through, activate the rest of my sizes. You can see really, really quickly, this 16, this nine by 16, sorry, I'm gonna make a small edit, change the uh, stacking of the text so it's on two lines, just to make it a little bit better for this particular size. And again, I'll make sure it's aligned to the center of the canvas. And now I have these three distinct layouts, the uh, 16 by uh, the 16 by nine layout that I built, the one by one layout and the nine by 16, and then all of the different sizes in between. Now for this three by five, I'm kind of curious what this will look like if I use the layout for the uh, nine by 16 rather than this 10 by 16 layout. So I'm actually gonna close this size, click on the X button and use this inherit from dropdown. And using this, I can force Flexitive to use this nine by 16 aspect ratio when activating this new size. So if I click on that, you'll see that Flexitive uses that layout by default and it's going to be a little bit different from what it would have been if I just activated by clicking. And the reason we've included this is Flexitive is gonna be really, really good at choosing the right aspect ratio for you, but it's not always gonna be perfect. So um, there are gonna be times when you're going to want to override it um, and just choose a slightly different layout. From here, I'm actually gonna jump back over to my landscape sizes, jump into my 16 by nine, and start talking about how I can add some very, very basic animations to this design. So to start adding animations to your design, all you need to do, go into the animation panel and click on start animating. Now, in Flexitive, we've built animations to be very, very easy and quick to add, as well as to scale well across all of your sizes. To do that, we've used animation frames. Now, animation frames kind of uh, each represent a stage of your animation sequence. Now, by default, you're gonna be given one frame to work with and everything's gonna be hidden. And of course, you can change that, add more frames, add animations. Um, and we're gonna start by animating in the background. So select that, and then on the left-hand side, you'll see there's hide, there's show. I'm gonna click on show. And then I can just quickly set this to fade in. From there, I can do this with as many different elements as I'd like. So we'll select Adaptive Bean Coffee Co. Have it fade in from above. Now I'm gonna add another animation frame. So we'll do add. And on this one, I'm actually gonna have my coffee cup animated. So we'll select that show and we'll have this. I'm gonna use the puff in animation. And then on a third frame, I'm going to select both my Celebrate Coffee and my Adaptive Bean Call to Action 
set them both to show with a simple fade in animation. Now if I want to preview this, I just have to select the first frame, click play, and I'll be able to see the animation sequence. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to make this a little, I'm going to take this another step further, and I'm actually going to do two things. First thing is I'm going to add an emphasis animation to the design. And then from there, I'm going to change the speed and pacing of the animation sequence. So after this third frame, we'll start with the emphasis animation. I'm going to click Add to add a fourth frame. And then I'm going to select my call to action and scroll down to the very bottom of the animation panel, where you can see there's this pulse animation. And I'm just going to select that and apply it. And you'll get a quick preview of what that looks like. And then from here, I'm going to change the speed and pacing. So in the first frame, this is where my background's fading in and my adaptive beam uh, logo is uh, fading in from above. I'm going to make this a little bit slower, just make the duration two seconds. Then on the second frame, this is where my coffee cup is entering the canvas. So I'm just going to make this quick. I'm going to make this 0.5 seconds. One final change between the third frame and the fourth frame. There's, I want there to be a little bit of a delay, so I'll set this to be three seconds. And again, I can preview these changes just by clicking back to the first frame, tapping play. Awesome. So from here, I'm going to jump back out to my all sizes view. And in the all sizes view, this animation panel is still available. And if I go in here and I click back to my first frame, and click play, you'll see that the animations that I applied in that 16 by 9 have actually been applied across the entire design. Now, this is a great tool for uh, saving time. After I've built that first size with all the animations, that's going, uh, that is what we call a global change. So it's going to affect every single size that I've built um, without you having to jump into each size and manually add those animations in. It's going to save you a lot of time in the uh, long run for building this design. So from here, I'm going to save my design and I'm going to move on to showing you how you can preview it. Now, from in the uh, preview panel, if you just click on this here, you'll see that all of the different aspects ratios that I've activated so far, um, so these are all the full screen sizes that I've created, I can choose as many or as few of these to preview at any given time. I can also choose to have a, a final tab that's the all active breakpoints tab. I'm going to select all of them and just tap preview design. Just give that a second to load up. And in this screen, I can quickly and easily view anything that I've built in Flexitive um, and sh send this across to a client. Now, you don't need to be a Flexitive user to have access to this screen. You can send this to a client who isn't a Flexitive user. Um, you can share this internally. Um, it's a really great tool for sharing your designs. And the other great benefit with it is it's always going to be the most up-to-date version of your design. So if I jump back over to the canvas and say, for example, I sent this to a client and they said, looks really, really good, but I want one small change. I want this coffee cup to actually be a cold brew uh, iced coffee instead. Now, normally that would take a little bit uh, a little bit of time to do with a lot of other design tools. You'd have to swap the image across all the sizes. In Flexitive, we're lucky. We can select this coffee cup, go into our assets panel, and you'll see that I actually have already uploaded my cold brew iced coffee. All I have to do is tap swap asset, and if I jump back out to my all sizes view, you'll see that change has been applied across the entire design, both landscape and portrait sizes. I'll just tap save quickly just to make it so that's been updated. And then all the client is going to have to do to see that change is just refresh the page. And you'll be able to see in real time that update with the cold brew iced coffee. So the final step in building this design is taking it and exporting it um, for your digital signage platform. Now, I'm going to be using Signage Live today. Um, so first step is just open up the export panel and then jump over for digital signage over to the CMS pa uh, panel. Now from here, I can choose, again, as many or as few sizes to export as I'd like, but there are two different ways I can export. The first is an iframe embed. This would go into, say, um, this would be something that you could host on your internal website. Um, or I can use export design zip. Now for uh, signage live, I'm going to deselect everything. And the only thing I'm going to need to actually export is this all active breakpoints option. If I select that, this is going to uh, export a version of the design where every single aspect ratio that I've built has been combined into a single creative. And each aspect ratio is kind of a touch point for, uh, for the design to 
um, choose what it should be displaying. So as I flick through the different sizes, it's going to actually show those different uh, layouts. From here in the CMS platform options, I'm going to choose signage live. And then all I have to do is click export design.zip. And what this is going to do is give me a file that is custom built and ready to upload into the signage live platform. I don't need to make any changes to the code. All I need to do is take that widget file that's provided and directly upload it into signage live and it'll be ready to go. Now, there are going to be times I've built a responsive design here. There are going to be times that you want to export a fixed size instead. Uh, maybe you have a 1920 by 1080 p screen and that's the only resolution you'll ever be building in. Exactly the same process. I'm just going to jump over to the fixed size. I'll ignore this warning. Yes, I would like to jump over to the fixed sizes and click on full screen. And in the full screen options, you'll see in the in this right hand side panel, there is this 1920 by 1080p. I'll just click activate. And that's going to adapt that 16 by 9 layout again into this 1920 by 1080p. If I save it, again, exporting is really, really straightforward. I'll just switch over to CMS, choose signage live, export design dot zip. And that's all there is to building a uh, design to be served through uh, Signage Live or any other digital signage platform. Um, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Again, this contact support widget is the best way to get in touch with us. Happy to uh, answer any questions that you have. And uh, otherwise, thank you so much for joining and uh, have a great day.